Welcome to WMUL FM Training. I'm Mike Stanley. This is the fourth video in our series on Rivendell Radio Automation. In this video, we will cover the main log in RD Airplay and how to control it using both the button log and the full log. The button log takes up the left hand side of the screen and the full log takes up the right hand side of the screen. The right hand side of the screen can be toggled between the full log and the sound panel. We will cover the sound panel in video 06 RD Airplay Sound Panel and RD Panel. We will cover the button log first. The button log takes up the left hand side of the screen. It displays seven rows of songs. The first song is the song that is currently playing. If the system is stopped, the first song will be the one that is scheduled next. That behavior is different from our old wide orbit system, which would display the most recently finished song when it stopped. The next six rows are the next six songs in the log. Each row consists of a start stop button and the cart label. If a song is playing, the button will be a stop button. If I were to click the stop button, that song and the log would stop immediately. I would then have to manually start the next song. If I were to click one of the start buttons of the next six songs, then the current song would be stopped and the song I clicked on would start. In this case, if I click on the start button for Go Now, then Air Aid would stop and Go Now would begin playing immediately. The system would skip past Sunshine and not play it. The time displayed on the stop button of the currently playing song is the actual start time of that song. The time displayed on the, on the start button of the next six songs is the estimated start times for those songs. Next to the start stop button is the cart label. The cart label displays some of the song's metadata. The first item is the cart type icon. This is the icon for an audio cart. Most of the carts will be audio carts. We will cover cart types in video 14, cart types. This is the cart number, and this is the cut number of the particular cut that is playing. This is the group to which the cart belongs. This is the scheduled start time of the song. For various reasons, the scheduled start time and the actual start time will rarely match. In this case, the scheduled time was 1648, and the actual start time was 1639. The next item is the talk marker where the lyrics start. In this case, it was zero seconds into the song. Perhaps the lyrics started as soon as the song began, or perhaps the marker was simply not set. In this case, it was 14 seconds into the song. This is the length of the song. This is the transition type. We will cover transitions in video 15, Log Transitions. This is the title, and this is the artist. This is the cut description of the individual cut. That won't matter for songs, but for carts such as promo rotators, for news and sports, it will matter. The cart title will be something like 30 breaks, and the cut description will identify the actual promo. The final line is another display of the elapsed and remaining time. The elapsed time is on the left, and the remaining time is on the right, and the bar gradually fills as the song plays. In this spot, you will see the out cue field if it has been set. This field is for indicating how a song ends, either fade or cold, or the last few words of a sound bite. It will only appear once a song begins playing. Now we'll move over to the right hand side of the screen and cover the full log. This side of the screen can show either the sound panel or the full log. Use these two buttons at the bottom of the screen to switch between them. The second row of the main log button displays the name of the log that is loaded. In this case, WMUL 0819. There is not much room and the name will be centered, so expect some of the name to be cut off. The full log is the entire day's log, including what has aired before and what will air later. The button log shows only the current song and the next six songs. You can scroll up and down to see what has aired before and what is scheduled later.
These buttons at the top will jump the display to that hour. The current hour will be highlighted in green. The song that is currently playing will be highlighted in bright green. The next six songs will be highlighted in light green. These are the same six songs that are in the button log. Songs that have been played will be highlighted in gray. Songs that were skipped over or that are in the future will be in white. You can scroll horizontally to see more metadata. The buttons at the bottom let you control the log. If one were to select a song in the log, and then click the start button, that song will be started immediately. Whatever song is currently playing would be stopped. For example, if I were to select the song Army of Me, and then click the start button, Sunshine would immediately stop and Army of Me would start instead. The log would skip over, go now, and Joker in the pack. The behavior of the start button on the full log is the same as the start buttons in the button log. The only difference is the button log is limited to the next six songs, but the full log will let you jump much later in the log. If I were to select the song that is currently playing, this button becomes the stop button, the same as on the button log. The make next button works similarly to the start button, except it lets the current song finish. For example, if I were to select the song Space Divorce, and then click the Make Next button. Sunshine would keep playing, but the log would skip over, Go Now, Joker in the Dark, Army of Me, Cosby Sweater, and the Legal ID, and set Space to Divorce as the next song. We'll cover the Modify button in just a moment. The Scroll button toggles automatic scrolling of the display. When the Scroll button is turned on, and it will show that by highlighting in blue, the display will keep scrolling to keep the current songs on the screen. Toggle it off if you want to keep looking at a different part of the log. The refresh button has to do with loading in changes to the log that have been made in RD Log Edit. RD Log Edit is the other module that you can use to edit logs. If you have a log loaded in RD Airplay, and then you use RD Log Edit to make changes to that log, you would have to click the refresh button to load those changes in RD Airplay. Except there is also a setting on each log called Auto Refresh, which will automatically refresh the log in RD Airplay after you make changes in RD Log Edit. The daily music logs at WMUL are set to Auto Refresh. For other logs, it will depend on whether the author of the log has set Auto Refresh. RD Log Edit will be covered in Video 16, RD Log Edit, and Refreshing the Log will be covered in Video 17, Saving and Refreshing the Log in RD Airplay. The Select Log button lets you load up a different log. We'll cover that later in this video. We'll now circle back to the Modify button. If you select an entry in the log, and then click the Modify button, it will bring up the Edit Event dialog box. You can also bring up the Edit Event dialog by double-clicking on the entry in either the full log or the button log. This dialog lets you change settings about the specific event in the log. These controls let you make this a timed event. We'll cover this in Video 08 RD Airplay Timed Events. This control lets you set the transition type for this entry. We'll cover transition types in Video 15 log transitions. This area is the timeline, cursor, and transport controls for previewing the song before playback. Click the play button to play the song through the preview channel on the board. You can use this to listen to the song before playback, for instance if you haven't heard the song before, or if you want to check how it starts or ends. Use the cursor to jump around in the song. The Start, End, and Requeue buttons allow you to set where this entry starts and ends. 
it is extraordinarily unlikely that you will ever have to do this. This function would be for times when you need to join a pre-recorded program in progress. This function is so unlikely that we are not going to cover it in the video. The manual has the instructions if you are curious. Click the OK button to save. Click Cancel to discard changes. Next, I'm going to switch over to another workstation so that I can demonstrate the Select Log button. Click the Select Log button and the Select Log dialog box will appear. This box shows you all of the logs that are in the system. You can scroll through the list or use the filter box to search for something. If I type in football, it shows only the two football logs. The Show Only Recent Logs option seems to show only those logs that were created recently, not necessarily those logs that are for the current day or logs that were modified recently. Scroll through the list to find the log you want to load. Select it and click the Load button. It may take a few seconds. If I make changes to the log in RD AirPlay, those changes are not automatically saved. To save them, click the Select Log button and then click either Save or Save As. If I click the Unload button, the current log will be unloaded and I am left with a blank slate. That concludes our video on the main log. We covered the button log, the start and stop buttons on the button log, and the cart labels. We covered the full log, how it displays entries, and the functions of its buttons. We covered the edit event dialog box and how to edit a specific log event. And we covered how to load and unload logs. Our next video will cover carts, cuts, groups, and scheduler codes. Thanks for watching.